broadcasting from two very different yet magical places not found on any map. Get ready to discuss the strange, weird, ghostly, crazy, spooky, and odd things that take place around us each and every day, all while having a little bit of fun. This is the Sandy and Todd Cast. Welcome again to the Sandy and Todd cast. She is Sandy. He is Todd. And this is, I don't even know the episode number. Do we know the episode number? I do know Uh, the name. I want to say 14. I think it's 13. It's no, I no, think it's, four, it's, it's 14. I think it's 14 because we decided to do 15 episodes for the season. Oh, that's instead right. Of 16. <clears throat> so we're at 14. And uh, this one is called The End is Near. I can't believe that we're so unprepared sometimes. Well, because we talk and talk and talk and don't get our shit together and then we just start recording. <laughs> and then we just start recording. I know. So I The know. End is Near. Uh, this episode really is going to talk a little bit about. Um, a day that I had yesterday that I, yeah. you know, I don't care if the people I spent the day with yesterday get mad at me for sharing the information because I'm uh-huh. going to do it anyway. Um, oh, but yeah. then I'll also talk about what we have planned for future seasons. And yeah. we kind of alluded to it in the last podcast, but we didn't get into it. So today we'll kind of lay that out a little bit. Right. And then next week we get the opportunity to hear about the evidence that Sandy got when she was at Fort Ontario. The, we talked about it in the last podcast, but we've actually got the evidence and stuff like that. We can kind of reiterate some of the stuff that happened there. Some of it's really great. Yeah, it was uh, like last week we talked really in depth about my experience there and the history behind Fort Ontario and what it meant to me to be there and all that kind of stuff. Well, I did actually, and I did post one of the videos. I have to go through my videos and post some more this week, but I did post one of the videos of me using the Mel meter. Now the Mel meter registers not only EMF, but temperature change in a certain location. And I was using the Mel meter in the old jail cell in the West Guard House. And I did post some uh, video of the huge hits that I got there. So if you haven't seen that yet, go on our page, the Sandy and Todd cast on Facebook or in join our group. If you're not already a member, stay weirdos, friends of the Sandy and Todd cast. And it's in there. But I did get a chance to go through the audio, not all of the audio. I may actually have more for you this week, Todd, but I did go through the majority of the audio that I had and got some really, really cool things, really cool EVPs. And we debunked one and we'll talk about that next week, too. That's right. That was the one I was I was actually really happy about that one because I was too. well because I wasn't sure you weren't sure and we were able to you had the opportunity to look at two sources of yep. the evidence and realize yep. that the one we originally had been listening to yep. was not false but it wasn't what we thought it may have been so right and you know what's cool about that is I love being able believe it or not I really love being able to debunk things because it teaches you how to look at things from different perspectives. And who would have thought that one source of audio would be so much clearer than another piece of audio that were literally six inches away from each other? So very cool thing. We'll get into that a little bit more next week, but it should be a really good episode. So this week um, I wanted to uh, maybe break rules a little bit that were set in front of me yesterday. But yesterday I had the opportunity to... Well, first of all, let me just say, I was supposed to go to an event yesterday. I know. With Chris Williams and uh, the other guy. She's really disappointed, you know. Yeah, I'm sure she is. (laughs) I I did not go yesterday. I was just too tired to do it. And I really wanted to kind of save my strength and energies for the family thing that I had planned for yesterday. So Mm -hmm. I needed to make a choice, one or the other. Okay. And I checked, I went with the one that was the most important to me. It would have been Mm -hmm. nice to meet those guys, but it was more important for me to spend time with family. So I have to, uh, I have to, um, I have to say this because yesterday, so I I worked yesterday morning, 
I'm really tired, whatever. And I thought, I'm just going to relax for a little bit before I get ready for this event. I had to be at my sister's house at 1.15. Mm-hmm. Didn't lay down. I lay down on the bed, but I just scrolled and watched some videos and stuff like that. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to start getting ready. So I went in and blah, blah, blah. I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a bath. My knee's a little stiff. That'll soak it a little bit. Whatever. So I'm in the bath and I'm not in there that long. You know, get washed up and I'm soaking my knee. I always put like a hot rag around it, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I look at my phone and it's one, two, three, four. It's 1234. <laughs> now, I have to be at my sister's house at 115. It's about a 25 minute drive to her house. 20, yes, 25 minute is. drive. <laughs> so I'm like, I literally, like, literally, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I had no idea how it was 1234 and I had no idea. Did you doze off? No. I just apparently had not between the time that I decided I was going to just rest for a little bit and the time that I looked at my clock, apparently I hadn't looked or I just never. (laughs) It's happened to me too. So luckily I get, I literally jump out of the tub. I had already cleaned up, you know, at that point I was just kind of resting my knee, jumped out, you know, got dried off, got done, straightened the beard, got the hair done, everything in 10 minutes. I was out the door well, a little bit more than that. At one forty-six, I was out the wow. door. Wow, that's me. Now, let me interrupt you just for a moment. Yeah. How does one straighten their beard? I don't know. Like, I do have you a have beard to put straightener. Stuff in it? I have. Like, I, is it? Well, I. I, I is I, it like a hair straightener? Kind of, except it's, except except it's a brush. Oh, okay. So it's not two all sided; right. it's one sided, and then so you straighten it with heat and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So all right, I hit the road. And I get stuck by a bridge because there's a boat going <laughs> through, you know, wash gosh. Mm-hmm. And I get to her house. I was had to be there at 115. I got there at 117 or 118. Oh. So, you know, I was booking it. Yep. At any rate, we go to this event and I will <laughs> tell this story too. When I was younger, my sister drove everywhere. We would go to all sorts of stuff. Elvis impersonators and we go shopping and we do all this stuff together. And she always drove. And I had forgotten how scary it is to ride with my sister because she's not the best driver. <laughs> and then while we're driving, she says, oh, and my cataract is really bad. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> God. That is Vicky. That is Vicky. So All right. at any rate, we went to this event. Now, here's the situation. You know, Tammy, my cousin. Mm-hmm. I've talked about she's been on the show. Um, yep. I've talked about her a lot. She's somebody that when I was very young, we were very close and then for most of our lives, we didn't really communicate until, you know, a handful of years ago, we reached out on Facebook and we stayed in contact and, you know, it. she's just one of my favorite people. And you know why? Cause she's just uh, so amazing. I love her. When we were out there last year, um, the first time and we all went to dinner, like Tammy and I just gravitated towards each other immediately and sat next to each other and just yada, 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 like the whole entire time. That's the kind of person she is. Wonderful person. Love her. Um, so she was there. And mm-hmm. then <clears throat> my other cousin, who I have not seen in 35 years, wow. was there. Um, and then her daughter which is more my age and Tammy's age, Lisa, who I've never met, was at this uh-huh. meeting. Yeah, now, I've, I've met Lisa through communication, like in this situation, where we've talked about the fact that they're doing a podcast now called Riding Side Saddle, which, by the way, is absolutely excellent. You guys have to listen to it. They're primarily on YouTube, right? Well, I know I've listened on YouTube. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be on all all Pratt platforms Good. very soon. They're going to get their Libsyn thing and do all that kind of stuff. Good. And Good. and Sandy and I, you know, have helped them kind of think about and come up with concepts and ideas and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But yep. this is a website they're they're kind of pulling off themselves. And I have to tell you that I had a chance to listen to their f- very first official podcast and it's it's very mm-hmm. good so yeah you guys got to make sure you check it out it's very very good so i have not seen my cousin for 35 years and the last mm-hmm. time i remember seeing her was very traumatic for me <laughs> do, do you know this story you, yes this yeah you told me this story are you gonna tell so, the story yeah i'm gonna tell the okay. story so right, i'm like 17 years old now my mom's family is very interesting because she has much older brothers and then she's got uh she had a brother and a sister around her age. So there was a big span of, of age gap there. 
So a lot of her nieces and nephews were not that much younger than my mother. And um, so in this case, my aunt who I haven't seen, or my aunt, my cousin who I haven't seen in 35 years is more like an aunt's age or my mother's age than, you know, cousin. But last time I saw her, I was about 17 years old and I was at another family member's house and she was there. And she stared at me so hard that she literally, I, this is how I explain it. She went into my body all the way down to my toes and back out again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it freaked me the fuck out. Understandable. Now, at that point in my life, I had no idea about any of this stuff. So I didn't know what the <laughs> hell was going on. Right. I just thought, what is she doing staring at me? But I did feel like she knew all of my secrets at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the point in my life when I started building walls. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not letting anybody ever do that to me again. Nope. So we may have seen each other at a wedding or something like that after that, but I've never had a chance to talk to her. Right. So a couple of months ago, Vicky, um, and of course my involvement with Lisa, her daughter and stuff like that, we just decided we're going to get together and have this little get together of like-minded people in our family, talk about questions we've had about the family, talk about woo-woo stuff, just really have a great I time. I love it. Yes, I love it. And uh, and then meeting Lisa for the first time. You know, sometimes when you meet somebody for the first time, there's that <clears throat> unsured awkwardness about, yes. right? Even yep. if it's family. Exactly, right? Had yep. none of that with her. None of it. I mean, I hugged them when I got there. Aww. So that tells you something. And you're not right? even a hugger. I know, right? Um, just, I had the most incredible time. And I'm not going to get into a lot of specifics about it, but it was like a twofold situation. We were there to laugh very hard about everything from bidets to strokes. And we, we laughed about <laughs> both of them very hard. Um but also, we talked about family mm -hmm. and questions that we had that we didn't understand and who this was and how they interacted with that and all that kind of stuff. Right. We talked a little bit about woo-woo stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's after this? What, what's coming up for us? We mm -hmm. talked about ghosts and spirits and we talked about, you know, intuition. You know what you know kind of thing. And one of the best mm -hmm. questions that was brought up was, how can you feel confident that what you know is correct? How do you know that mm -hmm. it's correct or you're not just being vain and full of yourself kind of thing? Right. And there's a nice discussion about that. That's a great but, topic. But we laughed and laughed and laughed. And then the setting was my cousin Lisa's home, which is several mm -hmm. acres and a house built in the 1800s that was a gorgeous farmhouse and it's there's gorgeous. a barn and there's you know there's offices in the barn and there's rooms in the barn and the house is built of stone that you know apparently a mason actually was hired who came over from i think ireland and in order to pay his that his way across he built this house for them or for not for them but for the family and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, you know, it couldn't have been a better day. Right. And it's kind of fall. So it's a little cool out there. And, you know, I just, I just had a great time. And I'm so glad. Oh, it was, it was, um, I needed it so bad. But here's the odd thing. And tell me what you think about this. Okay. Got done with it. And yes, I was tired yesterday, but I, I was, I mean, I didn't feel like, you know, a lot of times when you go into public and you're spending time with people, you walk away and you're like, oh God, I'm done. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like that with this. Okay. That's I never awesome. felt drained, but when I got home and when it was time for bed, I was so drained from it. I was out like that, out like that. And then when I woke up this morning, I actually woke up almost 12 hours later, I got almost like 12 hours of sleep. Wow. Right. And I woke up almost like I had a little bit of a hangover. Uh-huh. Well, I personally, I mean, think about it. Like you're energized. It's having that kind of interaction with people that you have so much in common with and have that kind of personality 
that mesh with yours. And being in that situation, it kind of energizes you and kind of cleanses you at the same time, don't you think? I mean, it, think of it sort of like crystals that sit on selenite. You know, your crystals absorb all of that emotion and that feeling. And then when you cleanse them on selenite, they're fresh again. And so I think that in a way, it probably was that type of situation. Like you needed that. You needed that. You've been stressed. You've been overworked. You've been just so much going on right now that you just needed that. And there's nothing like being with people that make you happy. Look at it after our vacation this year, how great we felt. Like we were high. Like we just came off this huge high. And we talked about it for weeks afterwards about how it was great. You know, sometimes in your life you need that recharge. And I think that that's what that meant for you yesterday. It was just this recharge and this excitement. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like um, I was drunk off the energy that that yeah. happened. Yeah. So yeah. we just had now, a wonderful time. Now, let me <clears> ask <throat> you this. And we'll talk. I, I want to talk a little bit about when we were talking yesterday with the picture. But mm. did you feel anything in the house? Um, here's the thing. And, and, and my cousin Susie asked me, like, she's like, touch this shed and tell me what you feel. <laughs> and then everybody looks at you and I'm like, oh, I don't, I, so, so I'm sitting there with my hands on the shed and I go, I don't feel anything. But you know what? I mean, honestly, again, my feelings are all generalized. So right. I, I could see, not specifically, I couldn't see a face or anything, but I could see the work that went into building the house and the family mm -hmm. that lived there. And right. I could see the, the farming work going on. I mean, generalizations, absolutely mm -hmm. not a yeah. problem. Yeah, without a doubt. Which again, it, it lends to your whole intuition discussion yesterday about, you know, that's one of the things that I don't struggle as much with, but in the beginning I struggled with it a lot because being one of the Claire Huxtables, uh, being a few of them actually, but being Claire cognizant, it's like you just know things. And I second guessed that my whole life. Like I just pushed it away. Oh, I have a great imagination. It really is learning to trust yourself and trust what you feel that it's not something you just made up in your mind that it really is true. Intuition is an amazing thing. Um, but you have to trust in yourself. You have to have that confidence in yourself. It's not an ego thing. It's just a confidence in the fact that what you know, you know. Right. You know? So, well, one funny thing that happened, we were talking about it yesterday, and you sent a picture of the house to me. And the first thing I said was, there's a woman on that porch. And I about died. <laughs> <laughs> because earlier when I was at the house, I was snapping some pictures of the house. And um, my cousin Lisa said, well, look at this picture. It was one of the first pictures that somebody that visited took of the house. And it looks very different back then because they've yeah. done a lot of work on the house. They just made it. Mm -hmm. I've told her over and over, I hate her because she's I living know. in the location that I've always wanted to live. It's gorgeous. And I even, you know, tried to get her to sway her will so that when she does pass away, <laughs> it comes to me. Um, tell her we want to uh, tell her we want to investigate when we come out next year. I wonder if she'll let me. <laughs> um, but at any rate, um, she, sh she earlier that afternoon, she showed me a picture of somebody's uh, picture of the house. And it looked like somebody was sitting on the porch and. Yes, there's sunlight coming through the trees and it's speckled on the, the brick wall and all that kind of stuff. But I what I saw and not just with my eyes, but with my, emo, um, you know, whatever, my feelings, my intuition, mm -hmm. there was somebody sitting on that porch. Yeah, it's interesting because I picked my my eye went right to that when I saw the picture. I was like, ask her if she'll send the picture. So when you sent it to me, my eye immediately went to that and. It's interesting because there is sunlight hitting through the trees, but if you look at the sunlight in the two big spots, on one on either side of what I'm assuming is the woman, they're more fragmented and they look more like sunlight. This literally looks like the image of a woman in a long dress yep. sitting on the porch. Yeah. 
almost illuminated, right? She looks illuminated, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And it was interesting because as soon as I saw that picture, I was like, there's a female on that porch. And um, so that was like super interesting. Very, very cool. So um, you gave me a name. I gave you a name. I gave um, you a name. And I got some information about the house. Uh-huh. Would you like to hear some of it? Sure. I would love to. I love that house. Um, Patrick Murphy Jr. and Martha Murphy, wife of said party of the first part, owned the okay. house, built the house. Okay. Um, Marth, sh- Martha Godfrey O'Reilly and James Godfrey, her husband. So apparently what happened was Patrick passed away and Martha got remarried uh-huh. to this James Godfrey. And then there is a William Krieger and his wife, Emma Krieger. Okay. Now, you had said that you felt, well, what you said was Elizabeth. Right. Um, an e, You know, I took that as an E name. Yeah. So no, I, it's some, sometimes <clears throat> it'll happen. It's just your interpretation, too. Right. So I kind of thought, well, maybe Emma. Mm-hmm. Right? Maybe that's a possibility. But, like, the full story is um, the farmhouse was built 1870. Uh, it's Georgian style. It's from red sandstone quarried by Patrick Murphy Sr. from his same farmland. So it's the the, the house is built with the earth, right? Mm-hmm. Which, again, mm, I love it. it's over the top. Um, <laughs> they were... Patrick Murphy Sr., born in Ireland in 1829, emigrated to America 1850, worked as a tanner, met his first wife, Mary. Francis was born in New York, blah, blah, blah. Gustav, who? Captain Gustav Pabst from drowning. He was, uh, he mm-hmm. saved him, whoever that, I don't know if he's related to the Pabst family. Um, I don't Possibly. see, I don't see necessarily an Elizabeth here, but. Obviously, the story goes on and on, and it's just, it's a wonderful story, and uh, I just thought I it was it. interesting that, so I sent, I said to Lisa, I said, I sent this picture to Sandy, and the first sh- thing she said to me is, there's a woman on the porch, and Lisa's like, oh my God, I've got <laughs> goosebumps, you know? Yeah. Well, again, like we found out at Cana Island Lighthouse, I had three names. Two of them were able to be confirmed. The third one, I thought we still haven't been able to find, but, you know, doesn't mean that she's not in there. Lizzie isn't in there somewhere. Right. Well, exactly. I mean, you'd have to really do some research. and just- Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's pretty darn cool. I love that. I love the history. I love digging into history. History is so amazing. It's just so amazing. And you can learn so much from it. And of course, the paranormal world and the historical and history, just they go hand in hand. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. We so talked about I'm- Time and linear and all, I mean, all that kind of stuff. It was mm-hmm. just it was such a great conversation. And so many laughs. I can't even tell you. The first laugh came when I got there and I said, could I use the bathroom? Because I had drank a bunch of water. And the cousin that I hadn't seen in 35 years said, don't be afraid if you feel something warm because there's a bidet. She goes, oh. first of all, she goes, are you going to sit down? Cause there's, you know, you'll feel something warm. And I said, well, I wasn't going to, but now I might, you know, I might sit down. <laughs> so the bidet was, was plenty of laughs throughout the afternoon. And, and great. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Although oh. so here's me. I use the, I use the toilet and I just pee. I don't, I don't sit down or anything, but next to the toilet, there is a remote control. So now oh, I'm, no. I've, done, I've done my pee, right? And now I have yeah. to flush. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, there's probably a button for it. So here I am with my bad eyesight trying to look at this damn remote control, figuring how to flush the toilet. And then I realized there's just a handle like, like all the other toilets. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you. Oh, my God. Totally that's me. too funny. Oh, I'm so glad you had a good time, though. I really, truly am. I was happy for you. I was not, however... In a good way yesterday, but uh, I'm at least happy that I could live through you. So that was good. That was very good. Somebody, better, somebody had a quick gallbladder attack, but yeah, wasn't so quick. It was about a whole day, but I'm feeling better today. So we'll be we'll be trying to remedy that within the next month or so. So we're so. going to have one more episode. That episode will be the final one next week, and that will include 
evidence from Fort Ontario and Sandy's visit. Yeah, yeah. Then we're going to take uh, some a little bit of time off, a week or two or whatever, and there might be some stuff we fill in there with. Mm-hmm. But when we come back, we're going to move our season number from 16 or 15 all the way down to eight. So we're going to do right. eight episodes per season. They're still right. going to come out weekly, mm-hmm. but each season is going to be based on a different part of paranormal. Yeah. So one season might be about witchcraft. I, I, right. That isn't necessarily fun, but it kind of the woo-woo world it would. There might be another uh, one about it, people who investigate. Another one might be about um, regional regional um, lore. So we might talk about Beast of Bray Road again, and then we might also talk about Chupacabra and all that kind of stuff. Right. But we're going to kick that idea session off with an entire season on Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Yay. That will be the first eight episodes. Well, that'll be the first season where we kind of focus on one specific thing. In the meantime, we're also going to move Empathicary out of the Sandy and Todd cast and back into its own entity. (laughs) I laugh because we change things all the time, but that's it. Just we have to be fluid because things for us change all the time. So we're going to move it back out. So it becomes its own entity once again which we should have a new episode for that coming up very soon as well. Maybe we'll do a couple of those during our break so that we can fill in a little bit with uh, you guys. Make sure you like our Empathic Carry podcast page on Facebook so that you can get all the information as it comes out. Right. So it should be really fun. I am looking forward to Bigfoot. At this point, we're still planning, so we have no idea what the eight episodes will be, but you know it's going to be informative, crazy, stupid, and fun. So you can't go wrong with those four. Right. I want to dig into a little bit about the different places that are hot spots For Bigfoot? So, yeah. So, like, for example, Whitehall, New York is supposed to be the, the big hot spot for Bigfoot. In not only New York, but a lot of places I was reading about it said in the United States. So I'm only a few hours away, like two and a half hours away from Whitehall. Um, and next year, Dave and I are going to go out to the Bigfoot Calling Festival out in Whitehall. I already made those plans with him. You'll have to do um, a live report from out there. I will. How fun would that be? So, yeah. So um, I'd like to get into that. We'll do some lore. We'll do some. I'd like to get on a researcher and maybe a couple of eyewitnesses. So there is a Bigfoot Society of New York. So I may contact them. All right. See what we can do. And there's so much that goes on in Wisconsin. I'm sure we'll come up with some fun stuff. Love it. So it should be interesting. And if anybody has had any Bigfoot encounters, please reach out to us. We would love to hear from you as well. You know, not just funny, but informative. I want to learn more. You know, it's Bigfoot has been around for centuries, literally just in different names, different cultures, but Bigfoot has been around for years and years. The, you know, indigenous people talked about Bigfoot and before then there were things that stories that were heard. So it really is. I don't know if there's anything to it. I'm open-minded enough to say that there really could be. Um, same like UFOs. Maybe we can do a season on UFOs. That would be fun. That so, would be fun. Yeah. So we'll see. But again, eight episodes per season, which should make it a lot easier for us to get narrow down it. topics. To, to what? Get to through get it. through it. <laughs> Now, I don't want anybody to think that we don't. We love doing this. We love doing this. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but sometimes it's just hard between our work schedules. It's hard to like do it. So we thought this might be a good idea. And it kind of keeps us more focused because we tend to go off on all these different. Not me. Yeah. You, Not me. You too. You too. Yep, you too. So there. So uh, and next week we're going to talk about the Ouija board. Mm. Or as some people call it the Ouija board. Yeah. So I have a little Ouija board story, and I actually asked some people for their opinions on Facebook. We have some opinions. So we're going to talk about the Ouija board. You know what I think Is we should do? Ouija, 
What? I think I think we should do the, the episode next week should be the uh, the um, Ford Ontario, and then we should uh-huh. do a special episode on the Ouija board <gasps> that fills Let's some that. the gap. Let's do that. That'll be fun. See how That'll we change things just like that. We look at that. We're because we're right on it. Yeah, we're right. I can't. I can't snap like you can. We're right on it. We're on the ball. So yeah, that'll be fun. A little bonus episode. Good idea, Todd. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. All right. So I guess that's it for this week. We'll do our spiel quick. Yep. <laughs> You can find the Sandy and Toddcast on any of the platforms that you normally find your podcasts, including YouTube and Twitter. Be sure to like the Sandy and Toddcast on Facebook to keep up on the latest goings on, including each week's episode. You can also join our group, Stay Weirdos Friends of the Sandy and Toddcast for more fun. Stay Weirdos is a safe place to share your thoughts, feelings, ideas, and random inappropriate memes without judgment. Sandy and Todd also have a podcast called the Empathicary Podcast. It's for empaths by empaths. And if you know an empath, you might want to listen too. Find and like the page on Facebook. And finally, if you're thinking about starting your own podcast and just aren't sure where to start, Sandy and Todd can also help with that too. Mind Garden Media is their latest project where the dynamic duo can guide you every step of the way in your podcasting journey. Editing, producing and consulting is what they do. Like Mind Garden Media on Facebook or email them at themindgardenmedia at gmail.com. And as always, thanks for staying weird. One more episode and then we're done. We're done. Not for good, though. Just for a little while. Just for a little while. And then we'll be back a couple weeks and then we'll be back with season seven. Wonderful. Six. No. What, are, what season is it? Season this? six. Is this season six? Or, no, it's season five. It's season no. five. We'll be back with season six. Really? Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. I listen Look it to up. us. We are awful. I think Hang this is on. season five, isn't it? I, I'm. You just said it was season six. No, the one coming up is six. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. Yeah, we're doing. See, we're in season five now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So <laughs> I don't even know what that conversation was. We're in season five right now, and six is coming up. All right. So. I hope everybody's as excited about it as we are, because I think it'll be a lot of fun. We'll give a little history on Bigfoot probably in the first uh, first episode, too. Quite possibly. All right, everybody. Till next week. Thanks for listening. And uh, tell a friend about us. And bye. We love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>